Welcome to a new discussion on art therapy as part of Intro to Visual Communication. Today we'll talk about art therapy, outsider art, open art, of a, a lot of different movements uh, within the arts uh, field and also some philosophical and psychological consideration on the question, can art be therapeutic? So the title of this class, going back to our slideshow, is Art Therapy. We are on week 10. Uh, and the subtitle is Between Arts and Sciences from the Phenomenon of Outside Art, Arborea and Open Out to the Therapeutic Application of Arts in Clinical Setting. Now the question that is warranted is, is art therapeutic? Does it make sense to utilize the term art therapy? Is it too redundant or is it an oxymoron, is it a paradox? Now many people would probably claim that art is therapeutic in the sense that art can make you feel calmer, make you feel happier, make you feel more hopeful, relaxed. It can also be a good piece of entertainment if a person is just bored and you just want to play with some uh, pencils, for instance, or any other media to make sense of the current situation emotionally and cognitively the person might find himself in. But is it true and is there any difference between art therapy as a discipline or art in general utilized in a therapeutic setting? So let's examine that for a second. Now one of the questions that I would like to bring to your attention is that is there a need to define art therapy from the perspective of clinical psychology for instance? Now the answer is yes both from a clinical and a legal perspective. In other words, at least in the United States, the legislation somewhat differs in terms of what an art therapist is and what they can do in a clinical setting. Now, we do have uh, specific uh, licensing certification, board certification from the American Art Therapy uh, Association that really encourage the students that are interested um, to browse as part of the bibliographical reference at the end of this lecture. But nevertheless, Art therapy is, by you know, defining something in very simple terms, the application of art, especially visual arts, but also to some other extent performing arts as well, in the context of a clinical treatment, especially for psychological or physical problems. Now there is a difference between art therapy and dance movement therapy, for instance, and music therapy. Today we will focus mostly on visual arts. We will talk about dance movement therapy, performing arts in the context of therapeutic efforts, and music therapy next week. Now, <clears throat> art has been therapeutic to some extent since the beginning of time. Art, making art, and observing art, enjoying art has been a cathartic process for many. It's a process that allows us for a second, maybe for a few minutes, to uh, take a break from ourselves and to envision something bigger than ourselves. Art is also a voyage, it's a trip, it's a narrative, it's a path that will allow us to explore worlds that might be distant from us geographically, physically speaking, and yet art brings us right there in this very moment. And it's the same for narratives that are contained in classical literature, for instance, in classical painting, in visual and performing arts, cinematic arts. But art therapy was not always considered to be a part of a clinical intervention, at least from the perspective of clinical psychology. And it's also true that not every art therapist is also trained as a clinical psychologist or a counselor necessarily. It's definitely not true that uh, many psychologists or psychiatrists are trained in art either as part of their own treatment strategy or just as part of their own um, efforts to maintain a personal well-being to be more prepared to help others. Now, <clears throat> there are several things that can be said about the history of art therapy. I would like to start from the United States, just for clarity, from the perspective of this lecture, and then move back to the origins of the practice in Europe and elsewhere. So let's go to our slideshow. <laughs> Now, art therapy was influenced by psychology, especially by certain type of psychodynamic, psychoanalytic, analytic psychology. And of course, those disciplines in terms were very influenced by anthropology, sociology, and even some studies within the spiritual, esoteric, and religious theme, not necessarily related to classical theology or apologetics, 
but more from a literature perspective. And this was read through the 1800 and 1900 in Europe. Now, this type of art therapy as a way to investigate our pre-conscious, subconscious elements was the way art therapy was first utilized in Europe with the label therapeutic form of art. And that's how it was exported to the United States um, and elsewhere during the 1900 and 20th century. Uh, sorry, through the 1900 and, and, and early 2000s, especially within North America. Um, now, one of the reasons was the fact that there were a lot of different arts movements, which we already talked about in Europe, that tended to either break away from the more polished construction of classically trained artists in the 1800 and move on to more a primitive uh, expressionist, you could say, uh, visceral almost form of art, which was connected to other forms of art, uh, such as Art Brut, for instance, and especially Du Buffet, I should say. It's also true at the same time there were many psychiatrists, um, psychologists, and other doctors that were interested in the creative strength of certain very gifted individuals who were also mentally ill. And the connection between genius and folly is not something new that belongs to the 1900s or something that was part of the uh, philosophical and historical literature since you know, the time of uh, Erasmus from Rotterdam and even before him. Um, this element of uh, unclear, unknown, somewhat hidden, creative, divine almost power, demonic power with demonic in the etymological sense of the term, the daimon, this inner um, fire, this enthusiasm for art was something that was very um, known since antiquity. So one of the questions was that, A, is it true that art is something that can be enhanced by virtue of having a different perception of reality, whether due to psychiatric disorders or due to the utilization of um, drugs, for instance, or other uh, stimulants or psychedelics, um, alcohol, for instance, and so on and so forth. Something that, by the way, of course, was utilized in time immemorial during uh, rituals um, throughout the world. Um, and on the other side, whether this type of art could be linked in a testable, verifiable way in the context of evidence-based science to test mentally ill individuals or perceiving mentally ill individuals, because it's something that we should you know, focus on, especially the way mentally ill as a label was utilized at that time, thinking about uh, the eugenic movement, thinking about the rise of power of, of Nazi Germany, think about all the, uh, the horrible um, experimentation as well as testing strategy that led to uh, horrible medical malpractice all the way uh, till very recent times in the United States. So think of all of that and projective testing within um, psychology, psychiatry, uh, personality tests, uh, Rorschach in blood tests, for instance, to investigate the mind of the individual. So art was, and it's still used as a tool for psychological assessment and emotional assessment and in personality testing. Now, there are many, many testing. There's a, the, the kinetic family testing, for instance, and the very mentioned Rorschach testing. But there are a lot of different systems within this psychological, psychologically framed utilization of art. Now, another thing to be uh, said is that because there are a lot of different um, modalities and philosophical perspective, humanistic, psychodynamic, psychoanalytic, and so on, um, integrative, systemic, psychoeducational, ways to look at our therapy, the virtual therapy is an addendum in a sense that at this stage of development art was to be utilized according to two main pillars, you could say. One was the testing assessment type of pillar. So you do art in order to verify or investigate certain things about a person who you think this person might have or might not have. So either the absence or lack thereof of certain traits psychological traits so to test. And the other side, which is the a posteriori, the follow-up, will be the therapeutic uh, 
utilization are to change something about all these traits about the person. So the ethical question here is that should and could we do that? Could we use something to change a person, in other words? Now, this is a question that it's an existential question, a philosophical question that influences all types of uh, psychological, psychiatric investigation because it boils down to certain assumption about a person should behave, be, think, exist in this world and strategy to make this person be, think, exist and behave in this world according to our rules. Now, I will leave psychologically uh, diagnostic consideration aside from a different lecture. I will include some um, materials at the end of uh, this presentation. But for now, let's focus on art therapy as a way to utilize uh, especially visual arts in the concept of uh, therapeutic setting. Now, <clears throat> some of the images that you find in our uh, slideshow here um, are taken from the production of, of uh, Jean de Buffet. And Jean de Buffet, by definition, is it's one of the most important proponents of uh, Art Brut. Now, there are many other things to be said about uh, de Buffet from the perspective of collecting art and, and, and relating to these artifacts that are primitive, that are visceral, and, and, they're, and, they're, and they're connected to our deepest recess, the recess of our souls, our subconscious self. Um, which are in turn related to other collection and think about Hans Prinzhorn, for instance, a collection of, of outsider art. So the other term here that I would like to focus on is can we understand art therapy as a thing, a movement, a structure, a well-defined um, artistic representation? In other words, could a person look at a piece of art and understand this piece of art is an art therapy type of drawing, for instance? And the answer is absolutely no, in a sense that unless we utilize those parameters that we discussed already last week, parameters of interpretation, art criticism, and um, assessment, simply from the perspective of the art system, so to verify whether this piece of art follows these parameters or not, and if it doesn't, why and how and to what extent, then we cannot have the ability to detect what this piece of art actually is. In fact, any type of art can be therapeutic, as we previously mentioned. So are there any other terms that can be uh, useful in this session? Well, we can think of at least open art and outsider art. Now, even for these terms, you know, to be mindful of the time, we just want to make sure we, we keep the conversation only on what is actually necessary for understanding.